Hey guys, welcome back to In House Vapors, where we take you inside the shop to show you what vaping is all about. I'm Robert. I'm Bobby, and today we have Alex with us today from Fine Vapor Style Mike in New York. Um, Alex, we'd like to thank you or thank you for uh, accepting us and uh, welcome to the show. Well, welcome to Fine Vapor, everyone. Um, this is kind of a nice small shop in Selmaker, New York. And what we do is um, basically try to find the best products possible for our customers. We test everything in-house and really just go through just about everything we can as far as scientifically and actually just looking things up. What can I do for you guys today? Um, actually, we're going to just go through a brief questionnaire. Um, and if it's okay with you, we'd like to uh, understand why you got into vaping and uh, what made you decide to open a vapor shop. You know, originally we all, I was a former smoker. I smoked for about 12 to 13 years. I smoked from, from a young, uh, young age on. Um, and that habit was really ingrained into me. So even after all those years of smoking, I finally brought myself to quit. And um, I got one of those little cheapy, automatic, really terrible kind of e-cigarettes. But even that really helped me get down to the point where I could quit. Well, later in life, uh, I went ahead and I was working at a smoke shop. And the smoke shop wanted to bring all these vapor products in. And at the moment, we didn't know too much about it. So we started looking about what we had and started selling to customers, you know, as an alternative to smoking in the smoke shop. Um, at that point, I realized that smoking and vaping really aren't as compatible as we thought they were. Um, honestly, a lot of people will kind of go from vaping right back to smoking again if it's too close to them. A lot of people need to have that separate shop, and they need to have somewhere where we can be experts about it. Um, so at that point, we decided, hey, we need to open a vapor shop. So we got this nice location here in Selmaca. Um, we started in with a lot of products, and we made a lot of mistakes. Uh, quite honestly, I used to sell um, Ego C Twists. Nice. Um, <laughs> the only thing in this shop you'll see with the name Ego on it now is the products that I give away free to my customers as a backup. Um, I have Ego blister packs that I would never sell. You could offer me money for it, and I would just, just take it. Um, there's no way that we carry that low quality. Um, but we do carry a lot of the name brand stuff now. Uh, we go with Kanger Tech and Hennigan, in which you'll see a lot of this product in the store belt. Also, you'll see a lot of um, Aspire and uh, other brands as well. And as far as mech mods, uh, we always go all clones. I, I know it's not always the best way to do stuff, but what it comes down to is I've got to find the best price for my customers, and the best they can. Thank you for that. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, so i got to ask. Will you tell us about some of the products that you carry in your shop, you know, starter kits, mods, anything? All right. Well, I always start everyone out with a variable voltage unit. Um, I think that's the way to go. I got some, you know, standard units. I can sell a nice kit out at $30. And that's a name brand kit, you know, with metal and glass clear monitors, all the chargers, the e-liquid, the case, and everything like that. And that's a really a basic starter kit. And I first start people out with a good Anakin product at around uh, $40 and go ahead and give them everything they need with a variable voltage device that has pass-through. That way I can give someone a good positive experience with vaping. There's nothing worse than going to the shop, getting sold something, and taking it home and realizing it's not what you want. Mm -hmm. As far as what I carry, um, Kanger Tech, Anakin, Aspire, those are the name brands we've seen in the store. Uh, one of the newest ones we picked up recently is uh, SMY. Um, they have a lot of good products uh, that they're coming out with. SMY 35, SMY 90, uh, the 180. Yeah. The God 180, you know, you don't necessarily need 180 watts, but it's nice to have it when you get it. You know? oh, yeah. And the battery life is amazing, as far as that's concerned. Uh, I heard those 180s have a really quick fire, too. They do. You push this button, instant vapor. It's exactly what you want in um, a high wattage device. You don't want to have to a good build up to it. Also, we put um, all of our electronics, we touch them thoroughly. Um, using, this is a home build oscilloscope. Go ahead and catch a look whether it's using some pulse width modulation or using a, a buck boost uh, controller to go ahead and control the voltage. And we really like to play around and figure out what that does to the vaping. Um, we test everything literally ad nauseum. I must go through uh, so many units every single month and just trying the heck out of them. Make sure we get something good. Okay, now in your opinion, I mean, for people who really don't vape at this point, how would you describe them? Huh, that is a good question. Um, I guess I would describe vaping as an alternative to smoking, first and foremost. But also, it can also be an interesting hobby for someone to get into. Uh, one of my favorite things to do is to sit there, and, and I actually use zero nicotine. Um, and when my customers come in, I always try to actually get them down lower. So if they say they want 12, I would ask them, hey, thinking about a six. Because it's also a habit. But we don't want it to be a habit someone's forced into. I think there's nothing worse than... 
uh, when you have to do something. I think that's what makes a lot of people want to quit smoking. It's not necessarily a health issue, but that you're forced into having to do something. So I like to think of vaping as a habit. And that's why I try to get everyone down to zero so it can actually be a fun habit, something that to really get some good, interesting flavors out, something to occupy your time, and uh, something to learn and build about. What would you recommend to a person who's looking to start vaping? You know, like, which one would you recommend most out of any choice that you could possibly make? I would recommend probably a good Tanger Tech email kit. It has the best of, of all worlds. When you buy this kit, it has your coils with it, it has a nice metal and glass clearizer with adjustable air. It's an adjustable voltage, but it's not crazy where there's a lot of choices. You basically have three different choices you can go with. Um, the price is right, the battery capacity is up there nice and high enough that they're not going to have to worry about it. It's just it's a good all-around device to really start someone out as far as just getting into the data. Okay, in your first opinion, what would you do? Oh, my God. You know, the, if you guys ever check them out, um, as far as mechanical mod, I love the Sir Lancelot series. The Sir Lancelot white, Sir Lancelot black, even the, the copper one, they all look like as far as style goes. Uh, you know, I've had a lot of different styles in here, um, but that's got to be one of my favorite. And if you pair that up with like a plume bale, like a plume bale white with a white Lancelot, but we Unfortunately, they're so amazing looking that I have none yeah. of them done right now. But I always have more coming in. I've got some nice black ones coming in. I'm probably some time in the next one. You're using duels, right? What is cloud chasing? What type of product would you recommend to a person looking to cloud chase? Um, cloud chasing is taking a nice oh, yeah. liquid and going ahead and taking it to the extreme. Yeah. I'm going to use um, no, some more water. Yeah. You're going to go ahead and yeah. use some better wiki material. This is going to go ahead and use a lot more juice. We're going to get it all at once. Now, when someone's doing cloud chasing, nicotine, first thing that goes down, do your nicotine. If they're your only 12 guy, give them a three or a six at the max. When you like cloud chase, we're going to get a lot more thin paper and three dollars. And you're really putting all that power through a lot of heavier metal. Um, as far as, uh, what's the other part of the question? Uh, it was, uh, what would you recommend to a person looking to cost it? I would recommend a simple 1850 battery bill for, yeah. for starting out. Mm -hmm. um, with a nice easy bill and one with some nice large holes and the coils can go together real easily. And that, that's where I would start someone out. Now, as far as graduating, then we're going to go to the 26650 mods. We want to go ahead and get a, a real high amperage, high discharge uh, head built for them. And I'll show them, you know, how to make clasping coils, how to make nice twisted coils, how to make uh, hammered caterpillar coils. There's, there's a lot to do out there as far as putting stuff together. Uh, and to add on to that question, um, which would you prefer, cloud chasing or flavor chasing? Well, I am definitely a flavor chaser. Um, this Tanger Tech sub tank here, which is comparable to the Joe Byer Atlantis that just came out. Which is um, what we have right here. Yep. Um, this is Atlantis, bigger vapor, great flavor, but they kind of lack a little bit of utility. So as far as flavor station, that Joe Atlantis head is amazing. But the sub tank is so close behind it, and it has the ability to use the old Tanger Tech coils. It has its own RTH, you can nice build a head on it. Um, I showed these guys earlier, I built a nice um, clasping, <laughs> micro clasping coil onto it. Um, the only thing on the downside would be the air flow on it. But if you get a good, uh, good OCD or a really cotton coil on it, it's an amazing build and great flavor, really. They did, they out didn't sell them. Mm -hmm. so the player and five volume. That's one point three. All right, while we're on the subject of cloud chasing, do you recommend a specific okay. juice that is strictly made for cloud chasing? High GG every single time. Um, recent studies have shown that GG, and especially high on for that, and for that a higher voltage. Mm -hmm. Um, actually, high voltage. Not high voltage. Well, let's be real about this because these studies are not clear enough. When you're ahead and over burn a liquid, you get that nice little dry hit. Mm -hmm. EG no, is obviously okay. what's causing a lot of the headache or a lot of the studies. So if you're going to be cloudy in the air, first off, do yourself a favor. High EG all the way every time. Um, and then build your coils right. Um, don't sit there and have not enough wicking material. Don't sit there and, and literally over hover it in such a way. Um, make sure you know what you're doing. Make sure you have a good ohm meter. So if you can't read the right distance on that, you can't get your own flaw and you can't get that done right. If you're going to build a bad bill, it's going to go ahead and be bad to the customer, bad to the person, bad to the You just got to sit there and get some education and do it right. And we actually love to sit down and take time and, and help everyone out build their stuff and show them what own law means and how to do their own equations so they can build a good, safe, awesome cloud chasing mm -hmm. bill. 
And they tell you that. And, and that's awesome. I love that they brought, brought customer safety into mind when they built this device. Mm -hmm. That being said, I have not found much of a use for 180 watt yet. Right. Maybe I never will. But having three batteries. Thank you very much, guys, for coming down to Fine Vapor. It's definitely been a pleasure talking to you. I hope that your channel comes very successful. I mean, you do did a wonderful interview. And uh, honestly, I look forward to looking at you the other shops as well. It's going to be exciting and very nice. Thank you. Well, we do appreciate you having us. Now, guys, if you did like this, please subscribe. Check us out on Facebook, In-House Vapors. Um, thanks, and have a great day.